So we are the Lake County team, one and only. I'm Lander Fengzhou. I'm Daniel Hunt. I'm Philip Vaughn. And we will be talking about what we learned in five seconds. So pretty much what we're doing for our little presentation is here, we're going to have a bunch of pictures on the slideshow. And then we're just going to talk about like how we did some of our projects and what we learned from certain units. So we're going to be starting off with the neuroscience and this some of the things that we learned through the neuroscience that we thought were kind of cool is like the um, blue tongue testing to see how many taste buds you have and we thought that was kind of important just because you could see if you're a super tester and stuff and how you tasted things differently from other people. Then there's the homunculus mask and those were really interesting because everybody was had different sensitivity on their face. Yeah. And there's ours and you can see the differences in sensitivity. I had a lot of yellow on my chin and Landers was mostly green. See in Landers, Lander can explain why his chin is red. Oh yeah. The red spot right there. I was working on a truck and I was trying to bend to check the metal. So I was going on like this and it slipped from my hands and it hit me in the face. <laughs> so that's what that's there. Now those are the, those are the little kids that we did the There's me with nothing. Right, so for infectious disease, we swapped out pocket knives to test if fire would clean the blade. Now on the knives we cleaned, or we tested just like about, what did I do, an eighth inch above the sharpened part. So we figured the part that you sharpen wouldn't have much of anything because the stone grinds against it and most of everything would be killed. And what, oh, go back, go back, go back. This, I worked so hard at that. Not really. It took me like five minutes. He welded it together. It's a, it's a slider for the knives. Yeah. So the contraption it held the knife. No, I was gonna weld the Zippo lighter to it, but the Zippo I bought didn't have any lighter fluid, so I couldn't. So we had to use one of them uh, plastic big lighters. And so then we swapped the knives and we did two controls. Two, and then we did, uh, everybody had two, a knife of their own, and then somebody else's knife. And that they swapped wasn't, them all. Yeah. And we also swapped down inside the handles yeah. too. Like down inside this part here. That's the control knife actually. Yeah, this is actually the control knife. So my car, is, or my knife is still in Amy's car. I gave it. <laughs> yeah. But, and then when he swapped the inside of his knife, he pulled out. Little. Chunk, like bite-sized chunks of stuff. <laughs> and so uh, he grew a mountain inside of it. Yeah. <laughs> there are some very interesting things that grew in the petri dishes. Yeah. Well, we actually. That, we like, uh, <laughs> that is Philip burning a sterilized oh. glove. <laughs> As you can clearly see. That's the safety part. Why do you fire the lab? Is it safe? There's 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 a better picture of his. Uh, yeah. Older. Yeah, the Originally, main, down yeah. here there was a sheet and I was going to weld the Zippo to it, but it didn't work. The main reason for that was <coughs> The main reason I built that thing is so when we clean our knives, it would be even for each one, so it wouldn't be changing the test if we were like touching it to the fire or to the bit as opposed to like way up here. I think we held about four inches away from the blade. You're not four inches, but Two, one. Quarter inch. I have four, right? And actually, the blades didn't grow a whole lot of stuff. So picking your teeth is a okay. It's just really nasty. It just looks really nasty. Oh, oh, well. Okay. And the insights were what grew the most. Oh yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Okay, so for metabolomics, I'm on metabolomics now. So for metabolomics, we went to a school with Greg, and we taught how to, to so we did, so if you go back to uh, those kids, 
So those kids, they live in a two, I guess, two room schoolhouse, like in the middle of nowhere. And so we went there, they don't have a science program at all, or one day a week for like an hour. And so we went there and we taught them every three weeks we went there. Actually, it's both sets of kids. That's the lower grade, and then that's the older grade. It's a K through six, or K through five, two room schoolhouse. Yeah. And so we went there three times total, and we did neuroscience, infectious disease, and we went and did uh, metabolomics. And for metabolomics, we went there and we talked to them about, uh, we did, we we're trying to explain a proper diet. And so we were fat, uh, fats, proteins, and carbs. And so we used the uh, analogy for a fire. And so proteins were logs. No, they're, no, no, they're coals. coals, they're coals. Proteins were coals. The fats were logs, and then the carbs were kindling because it burns fast. And so that's what we did for metabolomics. And then we did the uh, uh, the can't speak this. The we did the food. Uh, the, we did our food testing, and we did another person's. <laughs> and we used the self program for all of us. And so Daniel's ratio was thirteen to one. Mine was, I think it was either 10, or 10 to 1 or 11 to 1. It was 10. And then Landers was 18 to 1. Yeah. <laughs> this was during hunting season, so we were eating gas station food. Yeah. yeah. And then his science teacher was 9 to 1. Yep. And then my uh, friend of ours was 5 to 1. And she does a gluten free diet too. So that was kind of interesting. And that's about what we did. Okay, yeah, so then we also got to go on a tour of the Rocky Mountain Lab. And in here we were on that specific picture we were just looking at all the different machines they had in there and he's telling us like what they do and stuff. But um we pretty much started off the tour with them showing how they prepare stuff that they're gonna look at and like how they soak it in a paraffin and then they slice it up really thin and then they put it on their <coughs> plates and then they look at it. With a big electric microscope. Yeah. They had microscopes in there that were like gigantic. Yeah. And um, then that's in the same room. And a couple of the machines that they had there when he was explaining to us, they were like this big and they were like 300 grand yeah. for them. So pretty much all machines in there easily. Like that one. How much okay. did that one cost? Like an $80,000 microwave. Yeah, like yeah. It was a microwave. Yeah. <laughs> but then in that room right there is where they do pretty much all their testing and stuff like that. And then in that picture, that was in, it's a practice station for putting on the um, level four hazmat suits. So all of us got to try them on. And they're pretty fun because you get in the suit and then there's an air hose right there that you have to hook up and the air goes in and then the idea behind the air is it pushes everything out so nothing can come into you. But um, they said all those sick. suits ran on average $2,000 so they're not cheap. And then if you go back one picture for them. And then in that little room back there, it's a chemical shower. After you're done with all your lab stuff, you go into the chemical shower and shower off and all that. And it's basically like taking a bath in my solid. Yeah. So, so. And, there's, and then Brooklyn and my sister and the people from last year went with us. Yeah. So, I guess you're the mentors. Then at the Rocky Mountain Lab, they have about 450 people employed there. And just some of the random stuff that we we're, we're talking to people that work there else. And your arms want to go like this the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> but um, they were doing, they have a lot of tick research stuff there. Okay. And we we're talking to one of the tick researchers. But um, they actually have a, like a tick breeder there for breeding ticks. And then another thing to go along with the ticks, when they first started testing with all the ticks and stuff. Like a long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. The community wasn't really, I guess, 
wasn't hyped about it. Yeah, they weren't <laughs> very, I guess, I don't know what you can say, but not very happy about it. So, so they were kind of the, uh, calm the community down. This? They built the tick moat around <laughs> the entire building, and it's pretty much just a little bitty cement fixture that's about that deep. and. Now it's filled in with asphalt. Yeah, they filled in with asphalt now, but they, and they never, never filled it with water. Yeah, they never filled it with water, so because ticks swim. Or well, three or two out of the three life stages, they can swim. Understand? Yeah. Horrible fish. <laughs> 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 and then there's the best. And for a final project, we don't know. We got it. We're going to try to test the. Uh, we were thinking about doing the. Uh, how eating different fattier protein or carbohydrates sure. affects your mind and omega three and omega six ratios. You see how it affects your ability to do tasks and puzzles. Just like something simple, like to see if. If you had somebody eat like something sugary, then somebody eat something fatty, and something like with protein, and then one with carbohydrates, we're gonna possibly just have them do like a simple like maze or something. Like on a paper. Yeah, on, on a paper. <laughs> just to see if the different foods would affect their speed and stuff. But. Any questions? <coughs> yeah. So, what's What's the tick breeder? Is it a machine? Or no. It's a guy. It's a professional person. <laughs> <laughs> he breeds ticks. Right. Yeah, how like, do you raise them? Uh, I don't know. He never did, he did he show tell us about how to raise them. Yeah. I'll tell you the story. So my mom met him on an airplane like five years ago. <laughs> and so we're walking through the hallway and she sees him and says, hi. And so we talk to him for like a while. Yeah. Hey, yeah. what else did we see in the hallway though? Uh, we saw, oh yeah, we saw Yvonka's uh, publishing, because she used to work there. We saw her yeah, publishing yeah. magazine. <laughs> it was so funny, we were walking through, and I was like, oh, what the longest thing is here? And I was like, over and boom. <laughs> <laughs> you go first. Okay, so we were all wearing camo that day. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe was not, it, I don't know if hey, my Greg. counts, it's just kind of an all of Great grass, kind of green. And Greg wasn't. Yeah, but we were close. Yeah. It didn't have any camel suits. Yeah. Right. Okay. What, what did they bring the chicks to do? They bred them for to use them as like mice or guinea pigs for testing. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. That was the original. That was the original one. So I'm trying to think of all what they built. And they, and they found new, like there's an island in like California or Nevada where they found one species of tick that only lives on this island. Yeah. And then like Wild Horse Island, it's an island on Flathead Lake, which some of you might know where that's at. And that's, uh, <laughs> there's lots of ticks out there. So, yeah. yeah. Now he said three out of the two Stages of ticks? Are you saying there's only two stages or are there three stages? No, there's three stages. Okay. There's one stage where they can't <coughs> Okay. Is that the last stage or the first stage? I don't know what it is. I think the last stage they can swim. Wait, no, that's just what they told us. That's what the guy told us. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? I know Calvin had one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. Both? And I'm sure to, to add to Ryan's answer, I'm sure they don't treat them as nice, or they don't have as many regulations on the ticks as they do. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure if one's getting away, they just go like that. That's right. So there's different levels of hazmat seats? Yeah, there's, let's see, level four is that, which is level three is like the mask and the gas mask it's what the workers in africa have so lo local three is a suit but they have their own air supply they don't yeah. have to have the hoses yeah and they have one here in bozeman at the cdc and then level two it just gets less and less as you go down 
Did they ever discuss with you guys what happens if your suit's compromised? Yes, they did. So tell us about that. If the suit is compromised, well, the suit, if, there's, if your suit is compromised, and then if the suit is compromised and it hits, like you stab yourself with a needle or something like that. If you stab yourself with a needle. Are they taking a CO2 room? No, you have to go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just take you a CO2 room and kill you. <laughs> no, they actually, uh, you actually have, I think it was like, what, not 10 hours, but how long was it? There's a time before they put you into quarantine mm -hmm. that you can go and like grab stuff and tell people, pages. I'm going into quarantine. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. 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 there was a person in Germany, like, I don't know how long ago it was, but she got Ebola and she had like 24 hours or something to go home and get clothing and everything and go to a quarantine. I don't think it was 24, I think it was like 10. It was something. It was yeah, it really, it wasn't. Hours, yeah. not days. Well, she it didn't wasn't get like, Ebola, but she was exposed to it. She was exposed, yeah. and then they sent, they had like, they sent a dose of the drug from Canada to Germany, or wherever they were holding her, and they gave it to her, and she was fine. Yeah, yeah. But they don't know if she ever got it, because she might have been exposed, but she didn't. Yeah, because it was just a puncture in the suit, the girl from Germany, it was a, uh, Skin puncture. And then when they go to put the gloves on the hazmat suits right there, you'd think they'd use something possibly a little better, but they just duct tape. Duct tape the gloves. Right yeah, of course you did that. <laughs> but they have like a, a gap, like you put this glove on this gasket, and the gasket goes on, and then you tape. And there's, the so you have like a, there's two gloves, right? These are yeah. double, they're double walls. Yeah. So. So how do you get out of the, the duct tape? So what you do, uh... The gloves stay, the gloves stay on the, on the yeah, suit yeah. until they get worn out. So as long as they're still... These these don't matter because they're not actual suits. They're not, I don't think they're certified. They're practice suits. They're just they're practice, practice suits. suits. And so, they, uh, you just pull your hand out, but they're really hard to get your hand yeah. out. So what do you have to go to the band? Um, you just hold it. <laughs> <laughs> because, no, getting out, what you have to do is you have to unpack that air hose, you gotta go, go into that chemical shower, we hook it up, take a chemical shower mm -hmm. with a suit, then you go out into another room, take off the suit, and then you have to take off, you know, you go into another room after that, take off your gowns and stuff, and then take a personal shower, and then you can leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what did you guys throw off here at night? We actually couldn't, we didn't find out because... All we had was uh, TSA plates. We got only TSA yeah. plates, and so then we got more, then they had mold on them, so we never yeah. got them. Second. The plates were already alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we're guessing staff and strep and everything. Maybe you could have found some new antibiotics on your Yeah. Any more questions?